All right, in this video, we'll be going over investigation 5.2.5. So uh, what is the quadratic formula and where does it come from? So to see an example of what the quadratic formula is, let's go ahead and solve this problem using our regular method. So if you want to complete this square here, notice that we can split 3x on both sides from 6x. But 3 times 3 should be 9, and we only have one square here. So we're going to add 8 to both sides. So now that we have completed our square, we can do x plus 3 times x plus 3. Right. So x plus 3 times itself is x plus 3 squared. And now we're able to square root both sides to solve for x. So x plus 3 equals square root 8. Uh, or x plus 3 equals negative root 8. So from here, um, subtract 3 on both sides. Right. Minus 3. And from here, x equals negative root 8 minus 3. So here are two answers, negative 0.17 and negative 5.8. Right. Turns out um, there's another way of solving formulas like this besides completing the square and factoring. Um, we have something here called the quadratic formula. One thing I want you guys to notice is that notice this plus minus here. Right. That's because the plus minus is because there are two versions of the answer. Positive and negative. All right, looking back here, remember that when we square root, you can either get the positive version or the negative version. All right, and what do you want to use? Look at the letters A, B, and C. A, B, and C are the coefficients to our quadratic formula or quadratic equation. All right. So keeping that in mind, uh, let's go ahead and try using it to solve this problem here. So here, if a squared or ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, here a is going to be one. There's a one in front of the x squared. B is going to be six, and c is going to be one. All right. So now that we know these, let's go ahead and plug it into our formula. Every time we see the letter a, I'm going to switch it out with one. So switch a with one, a with one. Every time I see b, flip it out with six, and every time I see c, I'm going to switch it out with one. So Hey, wait a minute. Haven't we seen this answer before? Isn't that the same as this answer here? All right? And remember, there are two versions of the answer uh, one positive and one negative. So instead of adding, we can subtract here. And notice that, don't we get the other answer? So, what is this quadratic formula? Notice that when we plug in our coefficients, we get the same answers as we did if we completed the square. All right? These are the same answers. Okay. So, um, let's go and do a couple more examples. Um, traditionally, to solve this, we would have to factor. So 5x and 3x, x plus 5, x plus 3. And notice that all the squares matches, right? x times 3x, 3x, x times 5 is 5x, 3 times 5 is 15. And to solve this, I can subtract on both sides. Subtract on both sides. All right. But now let's solve this using our formula. So um, if I know my coefficients in front of x squared, there's a 1. From the x, there's an 8. And if the constant is 15. And let's try plugging this into our formula. Every time I see the letter A, I'm going to replace that with 1. Every time I see B, I'm going to replace that with 8. And anytime I see C, I'm going to replace that with 15. Right? And remember, there's a positive version and a negative version of our answer. Negative 3, negative 5, aren't those the same answers that we came up over here? Negative 3, negative 5. So it turns out the quadratic formula is a way of solving the equation, right, just by plugging in the letters. Let's try another one. Again, traditionally to solve this, we would split this up into 4 and 2. All right, um, here, let's see, we'll put the 3x here. 3x times 4 would make 12x. Um, x times 3x is 3x squared. And x times 2 is 2x. So notice that the 12 and 2 make the 14x. 4 times 2 equals 8. And then we have our 3x. So to solve this, we can subtract on both sides. Or minus 2 and divide by 3, x equals negative 2 thirds. All right, so this is how we would normally solve it. But let's go and solve it using our quadratic formula. So here, um, our coefficients are 3, 14, and 8. Oops. All right, and if we plug these in, every time we see the letter A, we're going to switch out with a 3. Every time you see the letter B, we're going to switch out with a 14. 
And every time we see C, we're going to switch it out with 8. So there's our negative 2 over 3. So that's our answer right here. And let's do the negative version of the answer. Switch the plus sign with plus or minus. And negative 4 is our other answer. Okay, and let's do one more example. So normally to solve this, we would need to complete the square. If I split 10x in half, half goes here and half goes here. But again, 5 times 5 should be 25, but we only have 20 here. So we need 5 more squares to complete our square. And now we're going to split this into x plus 5 times x plus 5. Oops, sorry, wrong spot. All right. And so to solve this, we can square root both sides. And we have two versions of our answer. We have the positive and negative version. Then we can minus 5 on both sides. And then square minus 5 on both sides. Minus 5. So here are our two answers, negative 2.7 and negative 7.2. And now again, we're going to solve this using our quadratic formula. So a is 1, in front of x is 10, and the constant is 20. Let's go ahead and plug those in. Every time I see A, I'm going to plug in 1. Every time I see B, you're going to replace it with a 10. Every time I see C, I'm going to replace that with a 20. All right, and notice that when I plug it in, all right, these should be the same answers as we had before, right? Negative 2.7, negative 7, and here negative 2.7 and negative 7. So what the quadratic formula is, it's a way of solving for quadratic equations when we, um, without having to factor it or complete the square, just by plugging in the letters. So uh, next we're going to be going over a proof on why the Pythagorean Theorem works.